Um, hi guys. Um, so today I'm going to be making a video about um, sorry to smart contracts and uh, basically basically security and solitary smart contracts. And um, so I mean after everything your smart contracts, um, there's there's um, there's a necessity um, kind of like um, it's a lead up um, ethos to actually get a smart contract audit. And before you actually do that, I mean, there are there are private um so private entities that actually conduct this um smart contracts audits. Um, so before you do that, they expect you to have done some due diligence sort of on your side. That is um you know properly document your smart contracts and, and code and particularly write tests and also carry out um to some certain extent security checks. So I'm going to show you those tools that you can use in um you know carrying out the security checks on your um your smart contracts and also how you can test how well uh, how you can see um and show basically how well tested your code is so that's that's basically what we're going to be looking at and um for 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 the security check stuff I'm, I'm going to be showing us how to use Slitter actually so um basically as you can see Slitter is um is actually a python tool was written in python too. so um it helps you to like check um, for loopholes in your contract, you know, known um, vulnerabilities and since you could actually do better, make suggestions. I mean, from this, there's something like three tiers. Yes, um, you can alight, alight your very high, um, you know, vulnerabilities that are of high priority that should actually definitely do this up and there's medium and there's low. So the low ones are basically something like um, naming conversions and how you name your variables and, um, basically just on use import and stuff like that. So basically that's just how it goes. So I'm going to show us a practical example of how to actually run it and, and, and you know. So let's just, this is um, sort of their documentation page. So you could like go through how to install it here. So before you actually install it, you must have Python, at least 3.6 installed on your system. So um, you could go to python.org to, um, to install Python. Python off, is it? Um, yeah, so you um, just download the Python from here and then you'll be able to um, run V3 install state analyzer. So once you do this, um, I could do this now, but I already have it installed basically, so um, might not be mean that much. So as you can see, I'm already satisfied. So basically, I already have it installed, and um, but uh, I really you shouldn't really have any problem doing it once you have Python installed. It's, it's basically straightforward. So um so yeah um so once you have your um I have some code I'm going to be like using so let me just open this up. Okay. So I basically have two contracts now I have the basic data so that comes with um stores and then I have the bank so yeah so um so i'm just going to show i'm just going to run slitter on these two contracts and see you know if we have any vulnerability in them and um how we actually shows us these things and then uh if our contract is well tested and it, it actually gives us um a visual representation of how this is but we'll get we'll get to that we'll get to that so um yeah so if we go back to their documentation yeah to just you just have to do slitter dot so it, it supports um the most popular um um smart contracts um frameworks which is Truffle and back dab etherlime and adat basically i think that Truffle and dab are actually the most popular they are the most popular yeah so um <clears throat> so you can run slitter on your own contract directory since this one since um these ones are this Frameworks are popular. Slater already knows where their contracts are stored. So if you just do Slater dot, it's going to run all the contracts in the contract directory. You could decide to work your your um your test do on um specific files like just one file. So in this case, you do Slater, then followed by the um the one file you want to uh you want to um, run the Slater out. So um these are some of the things that I actually test. Like I said, there's a table. Of what it detects and the impact and confidence. So um, there is the array by reference. There is incorrect sheets. There isn't the bit um, coder. 
there is um, multiple constructors. Of course, you shouldn't have multiple constructors in, in your code. And as you can see, this impact, this um, um, vulnerabilities are of high impact. So there are things that you should not actually leave there. There are states variable shadowing, which is like basically having two variables with um, the same name, or having a function that's having the name of the same variable. So there is Suicida, which is basically um, you know, using self destruct without um, much protection. There's um, uninitialized storage. There's um, unprotected upgrades. So if, you have, if your contract is upgradable, then you have to basically protect it because you don't want any just anybody to, to upgrade your contract. Because upgrading your contract is basically most times changing most functionalities. So you basically want to protect it. So um, it's going to raise a, a, you know, an alert for that. Then message value in group. Um, there's delegate group um, control delegate call. <laughs> basically, eh, whenever delegate call, comes into play your smart contract, you have to be really, really careful because um, it, it can go really, really uh, bad, very pretty soon if you not like uh, um, take care of, of how you're using the big code, basically. So there is incorrect use of interfaces, um, the histology. Um, so there's, there's basically a lot divide before multiply. So this is actually a very popular um, mantra in Solidity because of how Solidity does not actually play well with decimals. Yeah, so um, so it is encouraged that when you're doing math, make sure that you do all your divisions before you multiply. Make sure that you do all your divisions before you multiply. It's, it's like really, really important. Else you are going to be having really, really um, 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 untrue uh, um, results. Yeah, like it's going to be, you, you won't really get accurate results, really. So um, uncheck low level calls and um, so if you are making external calls, low level calls, you have to like make sure that you are checking the response. Um, incorrect unary, missing zero check, you have to make sure that there's no zero value in what you're receiving. The entrance, the entrance is actually a very big thing. And obviously, it helps with that timestamp. You don't really want to be using block of timestamp anyhow, especially when your contract is like um, high profile and you know security sensitive. Um, timestamp is something that can actually be quickly um, <clears throat> Maneuvered by by minus. So um function in each state. So once you are if your contract is upgradable, then your init state has to be properly uh, recorded and updated to make sure that you can only be around once. Assembly, assembly is not something that people use much. And if you do, you have to make sure that you know what you're doing, because it's like a very low level um code inside the solid code. <clears throat> On use states, you make sure that you don't have any variable, and this is just information, and I just want to tell you that you have. A, you have a variable that you're not actually using, you should remove it. Um, so, you know, um, dead code, these are dead codes are parts of your code that, that are never actually going to execute. Um, for example, this, this might not make sense to you, but imagine having a code after a return statement or something like that. Yeah, so, um, uh, so basically, uh, these are like about 76 um, pop, um, popular catches that Stata does for you. So um, there are also public functions that could be, that could be um, that external. So uh, most of these things actually have explanation. So if you just copy, um, you just go to the link, they are going to explain why you shouldn't have just like this. Um, public functions are never called by the contract and should be get external to save gas. So they have reasons why these things should be done like that. So if you just come to this data side, if you're interested, um, you know, just go through some of this stuff, you actually learn a couple of things about Solidity and, and its workings. So um, I think that's enough talk. Let's just get to um, using Slater. So like I said, I'm going to show you two things, how to use Slater and then how to check um, our test coverage for, for, for our smart contract. Um, that's going to be the second thing I'm going to be showing us really. So, uh, so um, it's really simple. Once you have um, Slater installed, what you just have to do is just run Slater and then dot. So what this dot means is that I run every contract from this um, directory, and then you just do it. And what it does first is um, um, add that. I'm using add that basically. So what it does now is add that is going to first compile your, um, um, your contracts to see that your contracts are actually compilable, you know, that they actually compile well. And then it's going to run the security checks on them. And as you can see, there's a, um, a couple of checks. There's a couple of return statements um, or prints, we call it that. And there's this one in red, and there's this one in blue. So this one is red, it's basically um, a high, it's basically um, a high issue, a high um, um, vulnerability issue, which means it should be tackled with SAP. And this green are actually 
mostly just suggestions really um that you should actually definitely definitely take a look at so let's start with the red one which says that um smart bank account of destroyed allows anyone to destroy the contract so um as you can see here there's also an explanation to why this is um a vulnerability and i think i showed us earlier about the suicidal stuff so make sure that yourself destroyed contract uh, functions are actually protected uh so uh basically let's just check that out so the smart bank um account contracts and line um 37 39 yes so there's a function that's called destroy here and it's not protected that means anybody can call this um uh this contract this function and destroy this contract is you basically do not want that so um what we could do uh is uh, uh this this actually no um there's there's no uh modifier for there there's no access control for this contract so i just quickly create one and do address owner initialize and then uh uh and then do a constructor uh and then do um owner it's goes to message to sender so which basically um makes um the owner the message the person to find the contract uh and then we just put a require statement here and this is going to require that uh message sender is supposed to the owner else you should make sure that um, it is unauthorized uh yeah i think uh yeah so um so i think this should um so i think this should uh be you know, call uh anyone being able to um call uh um the destroy function and thus we should see Hopefully, you see this one disappear because um, so I'm just gonna save this. Um, um, please, of course, note that this destroy function is not actually um, um, obviously it, it does not sit well because I'm making um, the contract the recipient of the fund. It does not make any sense. So just um, basically, what you put here is normally an address that you want all the funds in this contract that is about to be destroyed to be sent to. So this one does not really make sense please take note so um yeah so it's safe now uh um uh, and then we compile again and um as you can see it's 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 gone now um because when it is gone now so basically so that's just what Slita does for you lets you um be aware of the vulnerabilities of contact and you can start fixing them one by one and um you know making sure that you fix them run them again and then before you know they start disappearing disappearing disappear. So um destroy should be declared external. Yeah, it should be declared external since not going to call the contracts going to call externally. So um save stats, it's our functions, save stats basically. So um yeah, so uh and then so there's there's um a lot of other other um stuff that we should look at too. Um so um as you can see, this is um suggesting that your data or set meeting function is not in mixed case so this is basically just um naming um ethos like following set standards for naming your contract uh, your functions basically and then as you can see there's the entrance in smart bank accounts restore um line 31 that is so you can actually look at this um what is saying is that um external calls to withdraw to transfer and um stay free with the return after the call. so basically how the entrance happens is that um, withdraw to those transfer is actually calling an external contract which is um this address now in cases where this address is a contract there might be some um vulnerability um, um issues there might be yeah it's not like it's certain to be so what um you could do is make sure that before you do any of this um before you call external functions your bit just stay variables so i could just cut this um and then put it right here uh and then if i run it again it, it should it should disappear really um 
So that's um, basically how Slater works. You run it, goes through your contract, compiles it. As long as the contract compiles, it tells you the um, issues. So as you can see, the entrance issue is now, it's now, it's now gone. And then the most issues now is just about declaring your contracts, your functions as external instead of public, basically safeguards. Um, so yeah, that, that um, pretty much how Slater works. And it's actually a powerful tool. Now, of course, there are other tools like um, there's, um, there's Mythic. Now, Mythic is also a very popular tool out there. But the problem is that it's uh, most times paid. It's actually paid. There's, there's no fee tier for Mythic. Um, so, um, of course, you could then argue that maybe it's because it has more premium features than Slater. But well, Slater is like very popular among um, even industry leaders when it comes to security or dating. Top security auditors actually use it. So, when you later submit your contract for security audit with um, top, the top guys in auditing the firms, they definitely are going to make use of Slita or Mythic. Really. It's so tender means, I think, so there's a lot of tools, but Slita is like one of the most popular and also very powerful. So it actually, it actually does enough, does really enough for, um, for a few software. Yeah, so um, next thing I'm going to be showing us really is um, how to see how tested our contract is. So after you um written test, you know, you've written a couple of tests for your contract and you seem satisfied. Next thing I should do is run coverage. Now what coverage does is coverage what tells you how much of your code is tested. Um, you know, it tells you in fact, um, if you use this um there's um, a package called Solidity Coverage. Um, this is the, uh, this is what I, this is the package I'm going to be using. Um, so this package helps you um you know uh just just tells you uh, how much of your contract is is tested lines functions uh, and statements basically so it tells you how much of your functions are covered how much of your statements and we'll talk about statements you basically know what statements means your if statements your for loops your um you know payment statements and stuff like that basically so it shows you how much of those are covered and the higher the coverage obviously the more reliable your contract is so if when you're submitting your contract for um for for, for smart contract audits and you submit um a coverage report of 80, 90, they definitely will know that um your contract has actually gone through some sort of due diligence. Of course, it does not mean that, that your contract is um is not bug reading or is completely safe, but it, it gives some sort of assurance that as long as you wrote your test well, then your contract is to some extent um, um dependable and reliable. Uh, yeah, so and then they, they from there on carry their carry on with their um smart contract audits. So I'm just going to see how show us how. So, um, I think I have it, I have solidity, I have it installed. Um, I think I do, but let me just so basically, if, you, if you're using yarn, if you just do yarn add or go to the um to the um you know npm page and just do npm install if you're using npm. So um yeah, just do it this way. Um, I, I basically I'm sure I have it installed. I'm just uh, you know doing it again. Really, I don't know why. Um, uh, okay. So um, and then you just uh, of course you add it as an import here. You add add config. That's how you do to any um add a plugin. You add npm add a config, and then. Command to uh, the command to run this um would be mpx add add coverage and as you can see we have two contacts so it's going to be, make sure that it goes through all those contacts and you know see um go to the contact test in the test folder so I basically have now I have two contacts but I only have one test. So as you can see, the data so contracts as um, 100, which means that most of the um, functions were tested. And the bank loss, so basically, um, does not really have any test yet. So as you can see, there's zero for statements, zero for functions, zero for lines. So um, it's going to, you can see a more visual uh, representation of how tested your code is. It, as you can see, it's a reports reaching for coverage and coverage adjacent. So we, um, it's going to generate a, a coverage folder and if you, can, if you come to this index HTML here, you can actually open it up in your um, your browser. Um, as you can see here, um, it's going to show you. So if you just click on contracts, and then if you go to the first one, 
you can see that um, it's kind of like clear. Now you wouldn't know what I mean by clear, but I'll show you when I go back to back or so um, function uh, contacts. Now, but you can see it's a hundred percent statements, branches, functions, and lines. So it means that everything is covered, and that's why you have a hundred um, solid coverage. So um, that's what you should always aim at. Okay? And bank or so, as you can see, the, this well. Uh, stuffs mean that uh, this statement not covered, as you can see. So um, function not covered, statement not covered. So basically, um, as you start to write tests for this contract, and you start to write tests for this um, contract, you start um, you know making them clear, and then telling you that okay, this function is covered, 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 function is covered until. All functions and all statements are covered. Now, of course, you could cover a function and not cover a statement. So, in cases where you have an if statement uh, in your contract, so um, if your test only, um, you know, tests for one part of the if statement, the other part of the else uh, statement might be uncovered, and in that case, the function might be covered, but not all statements will be covered. So that's um, basically. Um, so it's also a very, very nice tool that I found um, really helpful too. So. Um, yeah, that's um, basically two of the tools that I wanted to show us today. Um, if you could, you know, in your own time, just play around. If you have any contacts that you just like, just play around with it. And it's actually pretty cool. It's what most standard countries, uh, companies use, basically. So um, just get familiar with it. And um, yeah, thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, you can um, just chat me on Discord or on Slack. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure that I'm able to answer um, any of your questions. And, uh, yeah, um, bye.